Life with Liliana and Friends. Welcome to Life with Liliana and Friends. I'm so glad you could join us this evening. I hope you have watched the first part to this conversation that we've been having with um, Soweri, Christine, and Fipe, my aunts, who are based in the U.S. and in the field of caregiving. They've been giving us a great story so far. We've had such great conversation last week. So welcome back, you guys. Thank you again for being part of the show. Thank, Thank you for having us, us back. Yeah. <laughs> so we left off last week talking a bit about the culture and the different um, the differences and how we can embrace the culture, the American culture, the U.S. culture, and while also remembering our own. And, you know, I just realized to the Americans, we always say that they're so different compared to, say, the the English or maybe even the Australians, like even the terminology, right? The way they say things, like you gave us a great example. Um, and I wanted to hear from Christine to start off with. So Christine, you know, when you went across, because of course, Aoki's now got, you know, a number of years behind her. You joined us, say, maybe six, seven years ago. Um, what were some of the things you found challenging going into the caregiving field? I think it was the language the terms they used terms there. they used and I used it's kind of confusing right. like um, right the other day I asked the client of ours their daughter to get uh, uh, tomato sauce <laughs> I put in the list tomato sauce and then uh, she thought it, she, she, bought she a can. actually bought a can of to- tomatoes tomatoes in a oh. chunk, right? Yeah, the tomato chunks. The tomato in a can. chunks, chunks in a can, and then I was like, yeah, "What's this?" And then she said, "That's tomato sauce." You asked. I was like, "Oh, I meant, you know, ketchup." And, the, and then she was like, "Oh, wow. so yeah, yeah." They use <laughs> different terms. Yeah. Different terms, yeah. 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 Yes, I can imagine. But I hope there haven't been any instances where you've gotten something seriously wrong or offended anybody by using the wrong language. <laughs> yeah, they're very understanding. <laughs> yes. But I guess another important thing to keep in mind too is that you have friends and you have different circles outside of, of course, the workplace. Then you start to, you know, pick up some of the language, the culture. So that's always an important balance, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes, it has. And you've managed to find some friends, Christine, because we talked about your small circle. Have you gotten your tiny, intimate circle there? <laughs> my two yes. Friends. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I have like uh, made new friends. Yeah, yeah, I have made new friends over here on this side. So, Good. Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> Good job, Auntie Christine. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> that's, really, that's really helped with her, um, you know, wellness, right? Wellness. Yeah. You know, self-wellness. Yeah. Because as caregivers, you're always giving. You're caring for someone. So you're always yes. giving. And um, sometimes it, it's draining, you know. Maybe, so yes. to be able to have yes. friends that you can share and have fun with and talk to, mm. you know, apart from her sisters, yes. it's been really great for your mental health, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. She's made. That's important, isn't it? I guess it just it depends on us as individuals. But I like that you mentioned that Aoki because I've heard of a lot of um, people who have gone over to do caregiving and just not realizing just how much it impacts our mental, you know, health, our well-being. And so it's important, what I'm hearing from you is that it's important that we have things in place to keep us, for our wellness, to keep us sane, if we were to say it bluntly. Mm. Because literally everything around us is changing. Mm. If you look around your life, everything is changing. So you need that one thing Mm. that kind of like keeps you grounded grounded in life, like brings home to you. Yeah. And one thing that we've uh, really um, grown in here, uh, being far away from family back home, is our um, spiritual side, 
right? Yeah, yeah. So that really yes. here helps us, our spiritual, uh, our faith. Um, you know, there's nothing that will grow your faith like being out of your comfort zone. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. You know, yes. so yeah. that kind of really um, has been, even though we have challenges, COVID-19 and mm. all of the challenges that came with it, you know, that has really held us, you know, grounded us. Um, and also having close family and friends to talk to. That's important, yes. um, you know, and meditation, meditation, you know, breathing, you know, yeah. just deep right. breathing and just picking up things that, that, that can help you like de-stress. Yeah. Right. I love that. I love that. That's so important. So, Anki, you know, you didn't just stop at being a caregiver. Now you are, you own a home care agency. I hope I'm getting, again, I hope I'm getting the words right. And not only an agency, but an adult family home. Can you just talk us through that? Because that is spectacular. That is like nothing I've ever heard any Fijian caregiver go and progress to. And I could be wrong, but this is the first st story I've heard. So tell us what happened there. What made you think of doing more than just going and, and caregiving? Well, there's a lot. First of all, there's a lot of uh, good, you know, Fijian uh, business owners that have also have their uh, agencies, um, you know, caregiving agencies in California oh. and here in Seattle. Um, I know um, uh, some great, you know, agency owners and they're doing great for the community in California and here in Seattle. About 10 years ago, um, yeah. I realized that I could open my own agency and uh, be able to, um, you know, give jobs to my family members and to my friends, you know, be able to organize that. Being from a business uh, background, you know, my degrees in business, it was a natural uh, you know, evolution for me to move from caregiving to owning a business in caregiving. Mm. Um, it, caregiving is such an important industry because it's uh, recession proof, you know, it's uh, healthcare is recession proof. So mm. whatever mm. happens, you know, economic recession, uh, in especially in the U.S. because right now, um, they're set up where they have social security, you know. So if you haven't personally uh, saved money for your um, for your care later in life, mm -hmm. um, you also have that backup, that safety net, that social security that will take care of you. And that's yeah. why it's, it was like a, a, a good industry to get into because yeah. of our, yes. you know, uncertain... Uh, uncertain times that we live in you know right. the economic uncertainty political uncertainty mm. there's a lot going on uh, so finding a business that will make sure that it's, it sustains you that is able to cater yes. to you and mm. um, uh, be more yeah. stable uh, in, in your finances um, caregiving is uh, very secure um, Yes. So that's, yeah. that was important to us yeah. because we, like I said, we as a family, we have our goals. And so we have our investments in Fiji. We have our family that we help, our family members back home. Um, so it's important for us to have a stable financial uh, ground. So to get into this industry, uh, uh, it, it was something that enables us to be able to cater to our commitments. I like yeah. that. There's just, I like how you said there's so much uncertainty around you, but this is one area because one thing is certain is that we are going to get old and highly likely that we are going to need care <laughs> when we get old. So that's fantastic. We're going to come back shortly. We'll take a quick break and come back and talk about some of the challenges with the business. But viewers, we'll take a quick break. Don't forget to come back and let your friends know to jump in on this conversation. Life with Liliana and Friends. Life with Liliana and Friends. Welcome back to this conversation with Aoki, Christine and Fipe. We were just talking about the business that they have, the home care agency and the adult family home. And I was pleasantly surprised to also hear that there's a number of Fijians that are not only caregivers, but business owners. So they own agencies um, for caregiving, if you like. So that's what home care 
agencies are. Now, Alki, just before we move on to another topic, I wanted to understand the challenges with the, you know, there must be a lot of challenges with running a business, like with any other business. But this, what interests me in particular is the fact that this is caregiving, right? And you've spoken about how important it is that we're able to deliver great care, that we embrace a culture, that we are attentive to their needs and all of that. Now, that's all well and good when it's just you doing it because you are in control of that. But because you have these businesses, there are a lot of other people under you. How do you manage that to maintain that level of consistency and excellent standard with your people? Those things come in training, come into play with training. So it's so important to train your caregivers. So that's the challenge. You know, how do you find caregivers to train? You know, mm, how, yes. how do you find teachable care- caregivers? Right. You know, it's, it's hard for us, especially at a certain age, to, new, to learn new things. Mm. And, and, so, and, and sometimes it's, it's important for people to realize when you become a caregiver, you have to have a teachable spirit. You know, you have yeah. to be teachable okay. to learn to be, yeah. the different, uh, you know, hmm. uh, regimen, yeah. the, you know, <clears throat> uh, that goes into caring for a certain client. You know, the it comes with the challenges, their physical challenges. So being able to train them, training is so important. Um, finding I... caregivers that are committed, you know, yeah. that are not only taking the job uh for the you know a means to an end mm, you yeah. know for for a paycheck like Fipe said, but right. you know to actually care about care the, for the person that they're caring for and being able to take it from this from this stage to you know to mm. recovery or to you know uh, stability you know yeah. being taken from a a sickly uh, uh, a sick care mm. you know yeah. uh, intense intensive it's, care yeah intense you know. And to be able to actually see it through, where yeah, the person yeah. improves, yes. where they find some type of normalcy, yep. yeah. where they have a routine that they're able to live the rest of their life in a more yeah. comfortable way. Yeah. So wow. we're dealing with people that are uh, unwell. Yeah. So being able to take that and give them a quality of life for the rest of their life, a good quality of life, mm-hmm. you know, where they're not just existing, but they're you know, so they they are able to enjoy those few years they have left. Yeah. To be able to care enough to see that process mm-hmm. through, you know, that process is a tough time because you're learning, you're going through all the difficulties mm-hmm. of trying to find, uh, you know, the comfort level of this mm-hmm. client. You know, uh, a routine. Yeah. You know that they can yeah. have to be able to thrive, to able to exist. You know to be able to have some normalcy. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that is challenging. Because people yes, just want a paycheck and they don't realize that, you know, this is a human being yeah. that needs help. Yes. And, you know, they don't put a lot of thought into what they're getting into. So it's hard to find people that care, mm. really, right. truly care and are committed, yeah. committed to, you know, the care. To the care, yeah. I mean, you know. Man, you just said something so interesting, like saying it's hard to find people that really care. Isn't that crazy that we, as you know, have to say something like that? But it's the truth. It's like because we are human beings, right? And our human nature is that often we are the ones that we care about first and foremost, and we are very can be very selfish, I suppose. But finding the right type of person, um, and I guess once you have the right type of person in your business, then everything else is so much easier because they're teachable. They really want to help the patient. They genuinely care. Right? Exactly. exactly. Because people look yes. at caregiving as just like you said, giving medication. Mm. But it's not, you know, right. it's uh, more about that. Sometimes you're, sometimes you're, you know, like oftentimes your client, they have a history, they had a life, they were veterans, they yes. were CEOs, they were nurses, yes. they worked Real hard, estate. you know, they Agents. worked hard in their right. life. And this is the, On this top. is the sunset part of their life yeah. Yeah. and you're so special to be able to be there for that time right so yeah. to be able to it's make true. sure yes. that they're comfortable 
that they're safe and with dignity yes, right? yes. Exactly. put on lipstick um, yeah so that they they're living their best life yeah. at that particular stage yeah. you know in their life yes they're not just you know yes. a second thought you know yeah, yeah. you know it's it's basically Excellent. adding some quality to to their last mm-hmm. stages of life making sure they're comfortable okay. you yeah. know they're safe Yes, those are wonderful insights. Thank you for sharing that. I wanted to just touch on some of, uh, I wanted to touch on your drivers, Aoki. Like this, you've, you've all touched on having your goals and there's different things that drive you. Can you share with us uh, one of the things that is behind just you pushing on um, in addition to your family, um, supporting your family? For us as a family, like yeah. uh, we've, we grew up being you know my mom she's a very caring person she's compassionate so it's something that she instilled in us Mm -hmm. so we're always very family oriented so uh, our caring and our compassion starts with our family first Mm -hmm. so we we have challenges in our in our family but we've learned to build each other up to carry each other you know and to to be able to support each other, you know, the weakest link, uh, you know, we cover each other so that we're able to take uh, each other from, uh, from the state, from, uh, from what, where we were at, to uh, financial stability, you know. So being able to build our finances together, mm. you know, we have investments that we've, we've made as a family. So we try to carry each other through, uh, so that drives us as a team. <laughs> Um, nice. and not, you know, not everyone is like that, but we have our own purpose and that's something that drives us. And we also have a very passionate, we have a yeah. philanthropic, uh, 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 goals too, as a family. Um, we, we have, um, a charity that we have in Fiji for animals. Yes. So we have an account with, uh, SPCA and, uh, What's the vet in uh, the West? Is it uh, Fiji? Something. Fiji something. Vet. Uh, uh, Fiji animals or something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so there's uh, uh, the veterinarian in, um, in uh, the Western side and in SPCA. We have accounts there set up where people can take in their animals to get neutered, you know, to get desexed. They do know that we sponsor those type of cases where um, it's an emergency or or, or strays or owners that cannot afford. So that's very important to promote uh, the humane treatment of animals, um, you know, to be more compassionate towards our animals in Fiji and to decrease the population of strays by desexing your pets. Right. That's right. Man... You guys have the biggest hearts extending, you know, for the human race and extending to animals. I just love that. So viewers, remember that. Um, you can take them. If you're in Suva SPCA, we will also post um, the vet in Nandi so that you remember that. And remember the name, Mariah Robinson. Okay, But this is only for animal care, not for like the adult caregiving. Please don't ask for her name for any of that. We're going to take a quick break and come back to the last part of this show. I will see you very shortly. Life with Liliana and Friends. Life with Liliana and Friends. Welcome back. Sadly, we've come to the last part of the show, and I'd really love for for you three, my aunts, my aunties, but I was hoping we could end by you guys just sharing maybe just one thing that you've learned on this journey, you know, being overseas, working in this industry, one thing that you've learned that's helped you, that you can share and impart for, to encourage one other person, because I know so many people will find value in this. Fipe, would you like to start? What is the one thing that's really helped you that you'd like to share? One thing that's really helped me, um, I think it, it's having, uh, being res- having a responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. Like goals, goals yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, coming here and you know, actually working, earning money, and, you know, helping. I think it's mainly helping my family and stuff has really changed me. And not also right. that I think looking, caring for people, 
you know, you learn a lot from them also, you know, mm-hmm. in and from your clients, from my clients, you know, different clients, different things you learn from them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think so just and because you're the youngest right Fipe so you don't you didn't really have to care for any younger siblings or anything when you're growing up so there wasn't that same sense of responsibility that Aoki and and Christine may have come from is that is that where you're coming from yes it was like a, having something to focus on focus on like it was a, it, it was so different you know mm-hmm. like yes so you that know, I'm like the youngest you know yeah. I was so that helped and then you. And coming here, yeah, it was, yeah. So that changed your life a lot. Yes, it had. having focus, having yeah. responsibility. Yes. Mm. That's that's good. That's a good point because there are a lot of people in your age group that kind of like doing a lot of different things, not sure where they're going, but just having a focus or focus, getting a hobby or doing something to take up that time, take up that energy. I guess, yeah. That's really useful. Thank you. Christine, what about you? Um, with me, uh, I think uh, when I was in Fiji, I used to love running, road running and all. And coming here, I noticed it was my therapy. Like mm. it helps me. Wow. Like mentally. Mm. It keeps Mental me sane, health, yeah. right? Yeah. So exercising keeps me sane. Yeah. Yoga, distressing, meditating, mm-hmm. especially when the, during the pandemic, it yeah. really helped me. Mm-hmm. I must say, uh, yeah. right on. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So living overseas, the, those you, those things yeah. help you, kind of uh, for self wellness. And my friends, yeah. I must say, my friends, my circle of friends, and our Bible study. We always had Bible. Yes. So yeah, that yeah, that really helped. That helps me. you. Yeah. Yes. What I you know, what I'm hearing from you, which you also mentioned earlier in the show, is just that self care. That seems the message that's coming out. Like self care we don't um consider enough for us as individuals and like especially in Fiji, it's not really a thing, right? There's like what self care? What meditation? Something wrong with you. I mean you can imagine in the households, but what I'm hearing from you is that you found great value in it. It's something that we should, you know, looking after ourselves, considering our wellness and our state of mind. And a lot of people would have struggled, right, in COVID nineteen. And again, like, it's different for everybody. Wouldn't you agree? Because, Christine, you're different from Fipe. Fipe, you're different from Alki. So that journey and what, what keeps us sane looks different for everybody. So it's important to know what that is. That's so good. Alki, what about you? You must have learned so many lessons over the years. What's one thing that you would love for people to, to consider or to, or you want to leave to encourage people with? I'd encourage people to set set goals for yourself, you know, five-year goal, long-term goals, short-term, short-term goals, goals, you know, and try to really know yourself first, you know, mm. know what makes you happy, yeah. you know, what makes you tick, finding your, that out, you know, self, self, uh, reflection, reflection. Mm. healing, you know, renewing our mind, you know taking away our false belief, you know. So changing the way you think to be more positive so that you can accomplish right. those goals. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's what I advise people to do. Yeah. Like really look into yourself. We are taught a lot of different things in Fiji, you know. Um, sometimes they're not good, you know. Uh, so yes. learn to speak good things into yourself. Love yourself first. And then you're able to impart that love, mm. you know, to others, you yes. know, in whatever you're doing. Yes. So yes. self-love, awesome. self-care, you know, mental wellness, all of those things. Find your purpose. Find what makes you happy, you know, and yeah. uh, stay centered. Yeah. Yes. That's good. What are some, just to finish off, like I was wondering whether we could bring this maybe a bit more um, personal, like in thinking about, um, what 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 things in a day like? What are some practical things that you can share with people? So, what does your day look like? You know, if you were to say, "Okay, I need to set my day up," because we're in January, right? So, a lot of people are looking for some advice on how they can set goals or what is a good way for me to set up my day differently so I can be successful. 
Can you share with us what you do, Alki, to kind of get yourself in the zone daily? Well, I I get like, for me, because I'm an emotional person, you know, so um, I try to, you know, get myself centered in the morning. So uh, for me, it's meditation, you know, Mm -hmm. it's prayer, Mm -hmm. you know, um, speaking uh, good things into my life and trying to just clear my mind of all of the situations and circumstances I'm going through, you know, and then making sure that I'm centered and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm able to think in a positive way. And then I try to be mindful. I meditate on, on speaking positive words, you know, throughout the day, you know. So mm-hmm. it's just like controlling your words and controlling your thoughts. Right. That's yeah. important yeah. for me because right. as soon as we put our foot on the ground, we're bombarded with situations and circumstances, things that don't go the way you want mm. it to go. So your mind is always challenged, you know. So trying to keep your mind centered on good things, trying to control what comes out of your mouth so it's only good things. Mm. So that's something that I've yeah. had to had to learn because growing up you in Fiji, we have a lot of negative words that are just thrown around, you know, mm. thrown about, yeah. you know. Yeah. So to be able to unlearn that, to be able to renew your mind and see yourself as, you know, as a as a beautiful human being that's able to create beautiful things, you know, that's important. Mm. First thing in the morning, yeah. get centered. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> aligned spiritually. Yeah. I love that. That is such a great way to end the show. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Aoki, and just positioning ourselves well. And the word in my head that's coming out is intentional, doing that intentionally, because we don't just roll out of, out of bed and into life and expect everything to be centered. So I like that you've advised and you've shared with us how you do it, taking the time intentionally, meditating, thinking through this, speaking life into others, which is so important. So sadly, again, we've come to an end. This is the worst part of every show for me, having to say, you know what, the conversation is done. But I really loved our time together. You guys have inspired so many people this evening. You have encouraged us. I am inspired by your story. And thank you so much for taking the time to come on. But I'm also really thankful that you're representing us so well in the space that you are. And I believe that your business is going to continue to be successful. You are going to grow. You are going to influence and love on so many other people. But thank you for just sharing a part of your journey with us this evening. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, viewers, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. We have another great conversation, as always, coming up next week, 8 p.m., exclusively on my TV on Saturday night. I will see you then. Good night. Life with Liliana and Friends.